the more you express yourself, the more we own you. I wish I could keep telling you that our mission in life is connecting people, but it isn't. We just want to predict your future behaviors. Spectre showed me how to manipulate you into sharing intimate data about yourself and all those you love for free. The more you express yourself, the more we own you. In this video, Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg appeared to be boasting about his social media platform's control over people's personal data. But this is deep fake video, meaning that Zuckerberg's voice was manipulated. They have the capacity to disrupt entire campaigns. Both Democrat and Republican lawmakers say deep fake videos are contributing to the spread of disinformation and have the potential to sow mistrust among voters leading up to the 2020 elections. In a hearing this week, former FBI agent Clint Watts warned about who may be most at risk. The audience I'm most worried about is actually not young people on social media. It, it is the older generation who's come to this technology late that doesn't really understand. Deep fakes seek to confuse and mislead. Hani Farid, who is a professor of computer science at the University of California, Berkeley, says the implications are serious. What if somebody creates a video of President Trump saying, I've launched on Iran or North Korea or Russia, and we don't have hours or days to figure out if it's real or not? Let me tell you a secret. You ever wonder why I'm so popular? Because of my big brain? Maybe. But seriously, it's all about two things, okay? Algorithms and data. I pulled off the biggest heist of the century, and people just have no idea. Are you speaking about this new algorithm to copy voices? This is huge. It can make us say anything, not really anything. These guys are doing something amazing and frightening. They're using AI to clone your voice. So you will need to record yourself for a few minutes of audio. Thousands of letters danced across the amateur author's screen. When you start to eat like this, something is the matter. You guys better quit politics and take in washing. OK, so create my digital voice now. Creating your digital voice takes at least one minute. One minute? My God. Test your voice. All right, so now I get to type something. Yeah, so the moment of the truth. Any words I put into the app can be played back in my digital voice. And here's the crazy thing. Even words I never actually said in the first place. Artificial intelligence technology seems to be advancing very quickly. Should we be afraid? I mean, I can definitely hear my voice in there. That's, that is, that's really interesting. I really don't care because their data has made me rich beyond my wildest dreams. My decision to believe in Spectre literally gave me my ratings and my fan base. I feel really blessed because I genuinely love the process of manipulating people online for money. With 2020 fast approaching, Congress is tackling the issue of deep fakes. Lawmakers on the House Intelligence Committee held a hearing Thursday. Mm -hmm. They heard from experts on the threat that altered videos could pose to national security and the U.S. election system. The committee says its goal is to consider how to detect and combat this growing trend. This comes amid mounting concerns that manipulated content could be the latest weapon in disinformation campaigns. What enables deep fakes and other modes of disinformation to become truly pernicious is the ubiquity of social media and the velocity at which false information can spread. So Dan, for people who are not familiar with this trend, explain to us what deep fakes actually are. Deep fakes are kind of the video version of fake news. They are fake content that use real content and manipulate that to say and do things that the subject never said or did. For example, they will take video of you, of me, of Nancy Pelosi, of Mark Zuckerberg, and overlay that with audio or images that have been manipulated using artificial intelligence to come to conclusions that the, uh, let's say, hacker or the creator of the deepfake video uh, to fit particular ends. They're not taking the video down. This is a dangerous time. 
Moving forward, we need to be more vigilant with what we trust from the internet. It's a time when we need to rely on trusted news sources. Well, just last week, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi went viral after being targeted in a series of doctor videos. Each of the clips were slowed down to make the Congresswoman sound intoxicated. And now as we get closer to the 2020 presidential elections, candidates and their teams are struggling to understand the best way to handle the threat of deep fakes. We know deep fakes are these kind of phony videos. First off, if you're on the net, which all of us are, how do you tell the difference and who's putting these out there? Rena, this morning I spoke with an expert in artificial intelligence and asked this same question, thinking the scientists will have the answers. There are no answers right now. Uh, Instagram also said, but Facebook will put a little note under it that says this is a false video or that this is fake. Instagram, on the other hand, uh, will not put that notice, and they said that we treat this video, we treat this content the same way that we treat all misinformation on Instagram. If third-party fact-checkers mark it as false, we will filter it from Instagram's recommendation services like explore and hashtag pages. Uh, that's from a spokesperson at Instagram. So we can see the challenge that social media platforms have when they are optimized. These social media companies are built for speed, for content to spread very quickly. When you have bad actors manipulate content, it is very easy, as we heard in the opening statements from uh, Congressman Schiff, uh, for content to spread virally. Well, so experts talked about this during the hearing, but what are some examples of how deep fakes can actually be harmful or dangerous? Well, to business, think about a stock price, right? So if you have a video of, say, a CEO of a public company that purports to say something that could adversely affect the stock price, you could see huge economic impact. Uh, in politics, of course, you could certainly see how this is a, a pretty effective weapon in similar ways that fake news is an effective weapon. Uh, and when I speak to people in both the artificial intelligence communities in Silicon Valley and the cybersecurity communities, what they tell me is that uh, the big concern is not necessarily that Russia or China will launch a full-out attack, that is certainly possible, but it is that this technology is so affordable and it is so easy to use now that anyone, an activist, a political campaign, up ticket or down ticket, could deploy this technology against their enemy. So although we look at, uh, or their opposition, although we look at the top of the ticket mm -hmm. and the big presidential race, really it's those down ticket races, those local races that could be utilizing deep fake content in ways that we might never see or notice until it's too late. So with all of that in mind, what are experts saying about the most effective strategy to combat deep fakes, especially ahead of the 2020 election? When I speak to experts about this, they often pause and think for a moment. Uh, so what that tells me is that there is not an instant solution to this. That doesn't mean that there isn't a solution, but that means that technical experts don't have a ready solution. And they tell me things like, let's all slow down before we click and share things. Now that is fantastic advice. We should probably all do that, but that is not a solution mm -hmm. to this content that is evolving very quickly. Uh, so right now, I don't know what the solution is, but we'll keep looking at this. I mean, do we know what the lasting effects are of the deep fakes and disinformation, misinformation campaigns? Well, we do have an indication of that. When we looked at studies that happened after the 2016 election, and when we look at the Mueller report itself, we see that the intent of the Russian hackers was to undermine American faith and confidence in our institutions, not just in government, but other institutions as well. And the effect of deep fake videos could be exponentially uh, stronger or greater than what we see with just text stories or social media uh, misinformation. Imagine all that power, all that data taken without control or consent. I see it now as clear as day. Spectre is almost too powerful to comprehend, and data is only sacred now. But there's no mystery to it. Just give all your data, all the time, to keep the gods of the valleys smiling down from above. We're entering an era in which our enemies can make it look like anyone is saying anything at any point in time, even if they would never say those things. So, uh, for instance, they could have me say things like, I don't know, Killmonger was right. 
or uh, Ben Carson is in the sunken place, or how about this, simply, President Trump is a total and complete dipshit. Now, you see, I would never say these things, at least not in a public address, but someone else would, someone like Jordan Peele. This is a dangerous time. Moving forward, we need to be more vigilant with what we trust from the internet. That's a time when we need to rely on trusted news sources. It may sound basic, but how we move forward in the age of information is going to be the difference between whether we survive or whether we become some kind of dystopia. Thank you. Stay woke.